amazing outer space and the remarkable beauty of the galaxies to which there is no end or brink. We invite you to become acquainted with the closest of them and to explore their unique features which are capable of capturing our imagination and are of particular interest to astronomy. Now then, the local group of galaxies, like its other neighboring groups of galaxies and more densely populated clusters of galaxies, is part of a mass concentration, the local supercluster of galaxies. This system has a diameter of about 100 million light years and a thickness of about 35. Its center is a massive cluster of galaxies in Virgo separated from us by a distance of 50 million light years. And the first to take this galactic baton is the third largest galaxy in size and mass in the local group, as well as being the closest unbarred spiral galaxy to the Milky Way. This refers to M33 or the Triangulum Galaxy in the constellation of the same name. It possesses the enormous black hole X7 which has a mass equal to about 16 times that of the Sun. It is one of the largest known stellar mass black holes. In addition to the Milky Way and its satellites, the Andromeda Galaxy, the closest giant spiral type barred galaxy to us, also with its satellites, which dominates the local group, also belongs to a friendly company of galaxies which stretch out for about 3 million light years in width. It is separated from us by a distance of two and a half billion light years. It rightfully occupies a dominant position, since it is one and a half times more massive than our galaxy. But we will not dwell on it in greater detail, since the channel already has a separate video completely dedicated to this world. We continue our journey, and before us stretches galaxy NGC 5128 or Centaurus A, the closest lenticular galaxy with a polar ring to the Milky Way in the constellation of Centaurus. This is one of the brightest and closest to us of the neighboring galaxies. In terms of brightness, this galaxy ranks fifth after the Magellanic Clouds, the Andromeda Nebula and the Triangulum Galaxy. Before us is the irregular Wolf Landmark Mallet Galaxy discovered in 1909 by Max Wolf. It is located in the constellation of Cetus, at the edge of the local group. It's at a distance from us of about 3 million light years, experiencing tidal interaction from another member of the local group, the dwarf elliptical galaxy PGC 29194. Further is NGC 300, a spiral galaxy from a group of galaxies in the Sculpture constellation. This is the closest cluster of galaxies to us. It is located about 6.1 million light years from the Milky Way. Astronomers have ascertained that NGC 300 is larger than had been previously thought. It turns out that the galaxy belongs to a large rarefied outer disk of old stars, more than twice the size of any known before. Thus, the size of NGC 300 turned out to be 47,000 light years. We continue our journey and we see in front of us galaxy NGC 55, a galaxy in the southern hemisphere of the sky located on the border of the Sculptor and Phoenix constellations, seen almost edge-on. NGC 55 is an SBM, Bored Magellanic Spiral type dwarf galaxy, and is relatively close, at a distance of 6.5 million light-years. In the visible range, four concentrations with increased brightness can be noted, which are the largest globular clusters the galactic nucleus is the most powerful radio source in the constellation. It belongs to the sculptor group of galaxies, where it is one of the largest. But in order to reach the galaxy Maffei 2, 
you'd have to grow older over and over and over again, since the galaxy is located at a distance of 12 million light years. Maffei 2 is a spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Cassiopeia. Most of the galaxy's infrared radiation comes from cosmic dust. This dust is found primarily within the spiral arms and has been shown to be associated with star formation. Four zero four. No, this isn't a fault in the matrix. It's the name of the next galaxy in front of you, the NGC 404 galaxy in the constellation of Andromeda. Due to its proximity to the bright star Mirage, which obstructs observation of NGC 404, the galaxy is called the Ghost of Mirage. The galaxy and the star are approximately seven minutes of arc apart. Thanks to this sort of neighborhood, the Ghost of Mirage is easy to find even with a small telescope. You just have to locate Mirage and the galaxy will also be in the field of view. Further is NGC 2403, a galaxy in the constellation of the Giraffe, part of the M81 group of galaxies. Most of the stars that populate this galaxy are old metal-poor stars, about 12 billion years old, which arose in the early burst of star formation. But there are small groups of young, hot, blue stars. Galaxy NGC 2403 is part of the M81 group of galaxies. Visibly, the galaxy also contains blue open clusters, dark dust streaks and a relatively small core glowing in the center. In addition to NGC 2403, the group also includes another 40 dwarf galaxies. We are arriving at the next incredible object, the Cigar Spiral Galaxy, or M82, in the constellation of Ursa Major. This is an object with fairly powerful star formation and a supermassive black hole in the center with a mass of as much as 30 million solar masses. Yet another amazing galaxy, PGC 45279, is a barred spiral galaxy, SBC, in the constellation of Centaurus. It looks quite similar to our galaxy, but X-ray observations show the presence of a Seyfert quasar-like nuclei, probably containing an active supermassive black hole, and it's at a distance to us of 11.7 million light-years. And finally, the most distant object that we will get a view of today is the Caldwell Galaxy, Caldwell 5 or IC342. An intermediate type spiral galaxy in the constellation of Giraffe. It is located near the galactic plane, where the absorption of radiation by dust hampers observation of the galaxy. For the same reason, it is difficult to determine the exact distance to the galaxy. Current estimates place it at a distance of 17 million light-years. That wraps it up. Our short journey observing the most interesting galaxies in the local group has come to an end. The study of these objects is very useful and instructive for explaining the formation and history of the life of the most commonplace, the most abundant star systems in the universe.
Our universe is immense, and in it, there are a considerable number of massive objects. There are giant planets, stars, in comparison with which our sun is just a grain of sand. Galaxies, clusters, and superclusters of galaxies, walls, and voids. This succession can continue, increasing in size and mass. And at any given point of this progression, you can find its accepted record holder, up to this point anyway. In this video, we will introduce you to the largest galaxies in the observable universe. So, fifth place in our galactic parade is taken by 3C348 of Hercules A, a yellowish galaxy with a diameter of 1.5 million light years at a distance of about 2 billion light years. Hercules A is one of the brightest extragalactic radio sources. The galaxy is about 1,000 times more massive than the Milky Way, and Hercules A contains a black hole that is also 1,000 times more massive than the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Unless you are a professional astronomer, you are unlikely to notice anything unusual in the photographs of the galaxies of Hercules A taken with the optical imaging. Even in the best of the shots, you will see an outwardly ordinary elliptical star system, of which thousands can be found in the vastness of space. But take your time. Observations have shown that Hercules A is very far from the Earth. In addition to that, with the development of radio astronomy, further observations have shown that by radio waves, the galaxy looks completely different than it does in optical images. The radio waves do not emanate from the galaxy itself, but from two powerful jets shooting out from its center. In optical imaging, they are completely invisible. But then, by radio waves, they show a complex structure. The next galaxy is IC1101, which for a long time was considered the largest in the observable universe, is rightfully in fourth place and resides in the massive cluster of galaxies Abel 2029 that is located on the very edge of the constellation of Virgo at a distance of 1.04 billion light years from the Earth. The galaxy has a diameter of approximately 6 million light years. If we compare it with the Milky Way, then it is 60 times larger and 2000 times heavier. Had IC1101 been in the location of the Milky Way, it would have swallowed up the large and the small Magellanic clouds, the Andromeda Nebula and the Triangulum Galaxy. Before you is UGC 9555, a huge galaxy that occupies third place. This galaxy is located directly in the galaxy triplet system named UGC 9555. The cluster is located in the direction of the constellation Camelopardalis, a distance of 820 million light years from the Earth. This enormous star studded island is just over 8 million light years in diameter. At the moment, the mass of this radio galaxy is quite difficult to estimate, but experts believe that it is no less than 65 to 75 trillion times the mass of the Sun. Like most huge galaxies, UGC 9555 attained such a size and acquired such a considerable mass due to the fact that it relentlessly consumed neighboring galaxies that dwelled close to the inhabitants of the cluster. Behold! Almost the leader, but still in second place in our intergalactic battle today, 3C236, and it's 15 million light years away. It is a radio galaxy of the Fanarov and Riley second class. It ranks among the largest of the known radio galaxies and is located in the direction of the constellation Leo Minor. The galaxy features a double double radio morphology, consisting of a giant relic source and an inner, more compact radio source. A recent episode of star formation closer to the core can be associated with the event that led to the reignition of radioactivity. And here finally, we have reached the leader for the moment, the galaxy Alcyoneus. In a new study, it became clear that its length is already equal to more than 16 million light years and it is located a distance of 3 billion light years from the Earth. 
researchers encountered the cosmic supergiant with the help of the so-called radio lobes, which are inherent to all massive galaxies, with the inclusion of our Milky Way. The existence of similar lobes on the Alcyoneus galaxy was able to be detected using the low-frequency array inferometric network consisting of 20,000 radio antennas mounted on 52 platforms in various European countries. The discovered galaxy turned out to be a genuine supergiant, the likes of which has never been detected in the entire history of space observation. There is a supermassive black hole in the center of Alcyoneus, which slows down the formation of new stars and thus greatly affects the life cycle of the galaxy as a whole. Sometimes this causes a violent spectacle. The black hole, absorbing material from the giant disk around it, can form two jets that eject fuel for new stars from the galaxy at a speed of close to the speed of light. These plumes or jets travel huge distances and then turn into giant radio-emitting lobes. During this process, the stellar dust is heated to such a degree that it dissolves into plasma and begins to radiate in the radio frequency range. The galaxy is also impresses with its other characteristics, which researchers have been able to measure thanks to the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. For example, the supermassive black hole at the center of Alcyoneus is 400 million times more massive than our Sun, and the mass of the entire galaxy is estimated to be 240 billion times the mass of our Sun. As you can see, the majority of radio galaxies have gigantic dimensions, but why all of them aren't huge remains a mystery. It's believed that these giants are the oldest radio galaxies that have existed long enough, perhaps several hundred million years, for their radio jets to grow to an enormous size. If this is true, then there must be many more giant radio galaxies that are known today. And the discovery of similar giants and their study helps determine the evolution of galaxies in the first place. After all, we are talking about a powerful galactic structure that originated from what was at a one time a completely commonplace galaxy. With the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers mapped out the huge shell of gas that surrounds the Andromeda Galaxy, and they were astonished to find that this thin, almost invisible halo of diffused plasma extends 1.3 million light-years out from the galaxy, about halfway to our Milky Way, 
and for 2 million light years in other directions. This means that Andromeda's halo is already coming into contact with the halo of our galaxy. They also discovered that the halo has a layered structure with two main layers and separate shells of gas. Understanding the huge gas halos surrounding galaxies is of crucial importance. This reservoir of gas contains the material for future star formation in a galaxy, as well as the remnants from events such as supernovas. It is filled with clues to the past and future evolution of the galaxy. It became clear that the inner shell which stretches out about half a million light years is much more complex and dynamic, while the outer shell is smoother and hotter. This difference is likely the result of the activity of supernovas in the galaxy's disk having a more direct effect on the inner halo. However, since we live within the Milky Way, it is not easy to deduce the profile shape of the halo of our own galaxy. It is presumed that the halo of Andromeda in the Milky Way must be very similar, since these two galaxies are also incredibly alike, both in relative size and in appearance. As modeling of the movement of the galaxies has indicated, they are both on the path to collision and will emerge forming a giant elliptical galaxy in about 5 billion years. But their weak halos have indeed already begun to come into contact with each other. Thus, we can say that the merger, although almost insignificant, has already begun. And there is no force that can stop this merging. But the question then becomes, what will happen to the galaxies if they are viewed from the side? In a collision, large galaxies absorb smaller ones entirely and it practically does not affect their structure. However, when galaxies are close in size like the Milky Way and the Andromeda, the collision causes their structure to collapse. A number of stars will be ejected from the galaxies. Others will be swallowed up by the merging of supermassive black holes. At the same time, the beautiful spiral structure of both galaxies will be disrupted and a new, giant, elliptical galaxy will form in their place. These kinds of mergers could bring about a small upsurge in the formation of stars. The collision of galaxies forms vast hydrogen clouds, which can trigger a series of gravitational collapses. In addition to that, such mergers can be responsible for the premature aging of galaxies, as most of the gas turns into stars. After a burst of star formation, the galaxies run out of fuel. The youngest and hottest stars explode as supernovae, and all the remains are the old, cold, red stars which live for a very long time. This is why giant elliptical galaxies, the result of collisions, contain so many red stars and so few active star-forming regions. By the way, the merging of black holes will cause orbital energy to be transferred to the stars, which will subsequently move the stars to higher orbits over millions of years. When two black holes come within a light year of each other, they will start emitting gravitational waves. The gas caught up by the combined black hole could create a glowing quasar or active nucleus at the center of the reformed galaxy. And finally, an effect of the merger of black holes can be to give a good cosmic kick to some stars, which will become genuine castaways, taking their planets with them. Who knows, maybe the universe will cast us off. Well, the collision of galaxies is an event of truly grandiose proportions. These kinds of cataclysms will happen to any of them as soon as they inadvertently graze each other. In some cases, the galaxies merely brush each other in passing. In others, direct impacts follow, like a head-on collision of cars, decisively changing the appearance of both objects forever. How will our galaxy look like in billions of years? Time will tell, but it will be a completely different, unrecognizable world.
You've probably heard statements like these. The pilot is experiencing a force of seven Gs or gravitational forces. Or the acceleration force was nine Gs or perhaps even more. Indeed, you yourself regularly experience stressful forces in everyday life. Well, that is not only emotional, but also physical. How do G-forces affect a person on Earth? How are they felt in space and even at faster than light speeds? Let's try to answer these questions. To begin with, as always, you should understand what G-forces are and how they occur. From the definition, it follows that a g-force is the ratio of the absolute value of linear acceleration caused by non-gravitational forces to the standard acceleration of free fall at the surface of the Earth. Being the ratio of two accelerations, g-force is a dimensionless value, but is often stated in units of the standard acceleration of free fall, g or gravity, which is 9.8 tenth of a meter per second squared. This represents how many times greater the force of inertia is in relation to the usual force of gravity acting upon a body under conditions of the Earth at sea level. And the more abrupt the maneuver, the stronger the g-force. The fact is, the human body is able to tolerate accelerations of higher than 9 g's for brief durations, but very few are capable of enduring them for more protracted periods of time. If it's only for brief moments, we humans can handle much higher g-forces without suffering serious injury. The record for enduring momentarily high g-forces belongs to Eli Beating, who rolled backwards on a special rocket-powered sled in 1958 and literally took a force of 82.6 g's in the chest when the sled accelerated to 55 km per hour in one-tenth of a second. Beating lost consciousness, but got away with only small bruises on his back, demonstrating the incredible capabilities of the body. John Ivanovich Gridunov, an equipment tester for the Soviet space program, was also involved in numerous experiments that verified the limits of the human body. They even called him the ground-based astronaut. While testing a pressure suit, he underwent a number of experiments in a high-altitude pressure chamber, including uncontrolled decompression. During a simulated emergency landing, he experienced an impact force of 50 Gs, as well as having withstood a force of 19 Gs in the region of thoracic spine on a centrifuge. Even the Orion spacecraft won't be able to deliver our full velocity potential. But let's glance into the distant future when spaceships will be able to travel extremely fast, thousands of times faster than with today's technology. Let's remember that light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. Consequently, if we assume that we will be able to overcome known technological limitations and build hyperspeed spacecraft, our delicate bodies made mostly of water will have to contend with the new risks that will result from such high-speed travel. If humans do acquire the ability to travel faster than light, the potential dangers that may be encountered are the discovery of a mind-boggling paradigm or the detection of wormholes in the current physical state. Even if we begin speeding up to 40,000 km per hour, the acceleration should be gradual. After all, it is specifically acceleration that affects the magnitude of the g-force. Hypothetically, you can speed a ship with a person aboard up to the speed of light. Let's just try to ignore the laws of physics here and make believe. But the question is not with the terminal velocity or final speed, but in how quickly it gathers that speed. If in a year our passenger remains safe at a speed of one kilometer per second, even with a moderate increase in acceleration, that person won't have enough of his average life expectancy left to do it. If by chance he did achieve such a speed, contrary to all the laws of physics, he should feel no worse than he would being in an airplane. Having said that, if the acceleration from zero to speed of light took just a second, well, that'd be better not to imagine. Rapid acceleration and deceleration can be fatal for a human 
Bodily injuries during road accidents occur during the process of the sudden drop in speed from tens of kilometers per hour to zero in a fraction of a second. It's all about the property of the universe known as inertia, as a result of which an object with mass resists change to its state of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion remains in motion at the same speed and in the same direction until external forces have an effect upon it. M104, the Sombrero Galaxy, NGC 4594, is perhaps one of the most familiar galaxies besides the Andromeda. You've most probably seen it in astronomy books. It got its name from its resemblance to the Mexican Sombrero hat. The galaxy is visible almost edge-on and there is a lane of dark dust running across the entire observable disk. M104 is located at a distance of 29.3 million light-years and in size is approximately 50,000 light-years across. Interestingly, the Sombrero is a double galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy located within an elliptical galaxy. Well, but what takes the cake is the galaxy's strong emission of radiation, which according to many astronomers is caused by a supermassive black hole in the core. But why did the Sombrero galaxy take on this shape? Was it always like this? Let's get to the bottom of it. This floating ring the size of a galaxy is the Sombrero itself, the largest object in the constellation of Virgo. It got its name because in the visible range it appears as a luminous cloud with an elliptical shape and an edge of dark matter. This image reveals the infrared glow recorded by the Spitzer Space Telescope. The image was digitally sharpened and overlaid with an optical image obtained from the Hubble telescope. Judging by the pictures, the Sombrero galaxy really doesn't look like others. This view of the galaxy really does resemble a hat, which is why it was called the Sombrero galaxy. Where is that Mexican who could give us the answer? It looks like he's hiding in the nebula. Well, let's try to figure it out. Now then, according to modern classification as we understand it, the formation of galaxies is considered to be a natural stage in the evolution of the universe that occurs under the influence of gravitational forces. Logic suggests that at the initial stage of the evolution of galaxies, particles of dust and gas began grouping together, fusing, colliding and consequently clusters appeared, which subsequently developed into something massive. The variety of galaxy shapes is associated with a variety of initial conditions for the formation of the galaxies. The accumulation of hydrogen gas within the confines of these clusters became the first stars. But how come the Sombrero doesn't look like any of the categories of galaxies? At least that's how it seems at first glance. The fact is, straight away this object consists of two different types of galaxies, most likely an elliptical and a spiral. And unlike in any other instances, their interlacing is incredibly well balanced and accordingly looks so beautiful. In addition, the Sombrero is oriented edgewise to the observer on Earth, so astronomers find it difficult to categorically determine the shape of this cluster as a whole. Perhaps from the other side of the galaxy the Sombrero looks completely different. But there is a second, no less curious hypothesis, which suggests that about 9 billion years ago, the accumulation of gas the cluster received from intergalactic space caused a hat of galactic proportions to be formed. Be that as may, before us is a mystery and one of the most beautiful of the galaxies. What do we know about it? The Sombrero is located a distance of 28 million light-years from the Earth in the constellation of Virgo and is moving away from us at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per second. Despite being such a large distance away, astronomers first discovered this object back in the 18th century. Its bright radiance which emanates out from the galaxy for millions of light-years all around helped them to detect it. 
The Sombrero Galaxy, or M104, has a colossal mass. Indeed, according to some estimates, the total weight of this space object is equal to the mass of 800 billion of our suns. Such a massive weight is due to the presence of the countless stars in the galaxy, as well as the vast ring of dust that encircles it around the perimeter. The structure of the Sombrero Galaxy, even today, doesn't cease to amaze both amateurs and professionals of astronomy. What's happening in the center of this spiral galaxy? In the image, the distinct dark lanes of dust are visible, as well as the bright halo of the stars and globular clusters. The blue emission of the galaxy is caused by the glow of the massive hot young stars that populate it. The abundance of gas and dust clouds and the presence of bright blue giants speaks of the active star formation processes that is taking place in the Sombrero galaxy. Looking closely at the central component in this photo, you can see many pinpoint sources of light, which are the globular clusters. The spectacular dust rings of M104 hide a large number of the young and bright stars and have a very complex structure that is still not fully understood by astronomers. The very central portion of the Sombrero galaxy radiates in all ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. There is evidence indicating that at the center of the Sombrero galaxy is a supermassive black hole with a mass equal to one billion suns. This information has been confirmed by data from the Hubble Space Telescope, which has recorded the extremely fast rotation of the stars in the center of Sombrero. Also, the central portion of the galaxy is emitting an abnormally large quantity of X-rays, which may also indicate the presence of a black hole at its core. If desired, it can even be seen with an amateur telescope. It's sufficient to point it at the southern edge of the Virgo cluster and the galaxy will appear right before your eyes. Its apparent magnitude is 8, so it won't be difficult for you to locate it, but you won't be able to see all the beauty in great detail. We can only imagine how many amazing worlds of the many distant galaxies and systems could possibly be out there.
at some point, every single one of you has contemplated the thought, what is infinity anyhow? How can you understand it? How can you imagine it? How can you wrap your mind around it? And how can you picture an endless sequence of numbers? A constant which never ends. A number that includes the phone numbers of all your acquaintances, the dates of birth of all the people on the planet, their credit card numbers, the designations of all known stars, and even the date of your dentist appointment. All of this massive series of numbers is contained in an amazing mathematical constant, the number pi. And despite the fact that it has been known since ancient times, to this day pi stimulates the minds not only of scientists, but also of ordinary people. Those who first calculated the number pi can be considered prehistoric people, who, when weaving baskets, noticed that in order to get the desired diameter, it was necessary to use a reed three times as long as the diameter. This fact was recorded on tablets made of baked clay that were found in Mesopotamia. Examples of accurate and not entirely accurate calculations of the number pi can be found in the works of Egyptian, Babylonian, Indian, Chinese and ancient Greek geometers. So what is this mysterious number pi anyway? It is a mathematical constant that expresses the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. Many ancient scientists, including Archimedes, tried to calculate pi each time by filling a circle with polygons that had an enormous number of sides, so they would more tightly fit within the area of the circle. Archimedes used a 96 gun Chinese mathematicians fit in a 192 gun, then a 3072 gun, and finally they managed to fit a polygon with a 24,576 sides into a circle. This is why many mathematicians contend that a circle is a figure with an infinite number of angles. Up until the 15th century, only nine decimal places were known. Isaac Newton calculated the number pi to 16 digits. As recently as the 19th century, it was calculated out of 707 decimal places. But with the advent of computers, this process has accelerated significantly, and now science has already identified about 50 trillion decimal places. Pi is irrational, its decimal representation never comes to an end, and it is not periodic. Consequently, based upon the formula that the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times its diameter, the circle doesn't come to a close, since there is no finite number. This fact can also be closely related to the spiral characteristics in our lives. After all, even the orbit of our Earth is not at all a circle. It moves in a spiral relative to the center of the universe and space-time. A logical question arises. How many numbers do you need to know in order to make a given calculation? Let's round pi up to the 15th digit. And as an example, let's take the farthest spacecraft from the Earth, Voyager 1, which is located at a distance of about 20 billion kilometers. Imagine a circle with a radius this size, in other words, a diameter of 40 billion kilometers, for which we want to calculate its circumference using formula 2 pi r. It turns out to be a little more than 125 billion kilometers. We don't need to put emphasis on the exact circumference, we are interested in the error of the measurement. So it turns out that the circumference using the constant rounded up to 15 digits is calculated with an error of less than 4 centimeters. Think about that. We have a circumference of 125 billion kilometers and the margin of error is less than the length of your little finger. We can study the problem using the example of the Earth. The diameter at the equator is 12,756 kilometers. The circumference of the equator is 40,075 kilometers. 
which is the distance you'd have to cover if you want to travel around the world, not taking into account mountains, valleys and obstacles like buildings, parking lots, ocean waves, etc. How wrong is your odometer when using a rounded off value of pi? Its error is about the size of a molecule. Naturally, there are different kinds of molecules which do differ in size, but you get the idea. The size of the error is about 10,000 times less than the thickness of a strand of hair. Now, let's take the largest possible object, the visible universe. Its radius is approximately 46 billion light years. How many decimal places of pi do you need to use to calculate the circumference of the universe with an error of no more than the diameter of a hydrogen atom, the smallest atom? You need 39 places following the decimal. If you think about how huge the universe is, well, and truly larger than we could ever comprehend, and such a tiny atom of hydrogen, you will then understand that a really accurate calculation doesn't require very many decimal places of pi. There is an abundance of surprising facts about this constant. Stanislav Ulam, a Polish-American mathematician, in 1965 wrote the numbers of pi out on graph paper. He put the three in the center and moving in a counterclockwise spiral wrote down the numbers after the decimal point. In addition, he drew circles around all the prime numbers. He was both surprised and aghast when he noticed that the circles were organized in straight lines. Then, using a special algorithm, the mathematician made a color picture based on this drawing, which is called the Ulam spiral. Seeing that pi correlates a curved object, a circle, with a straight object, the diameter, we can find it in all sorts of places. Some find the number pi in riverbeds, the length of a river, with all of its meandering bands in relation to the straight line between its source and its delta, according to calculations, is on average pi. Models for virtually all wave-related phenomena will involve the number pi. Let's take light and sound, for example. Pi determines what colors are visible in the spectrum of a rainbow and how the note C should sound. The number pi is also observed in the process of the cells in apples acquiring a spherical form and in the brightness of the light output of a supernova. Well, perhaps the code of the universe is encrypted in this number.
In order to find out if these missing perturbations could be caused by a multiply connected universe, scientists made many computer simulations of what the cosmic microwave background radiation would look like if the universe had the form of a giant three-dimensional donut, where it is connected to itself in all three dimensions. The properties of the observed fluctuations, such as the deviation from the mean value of a random magnitude characterizing a system of a large number of chaotically interacting particles, of the cosmic microwave background radiation show insufficient power on a scale exceeding the size of the universe. This lack of power means that fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background radiation are not present on such scales and that our universe is multiply connected and finite. In other words, it looks like the cosmic microwave background is missing signals which must be present if the universe were truly infinite. One explanation for this suggests that the topology of the universe is curved in such a way that it connects back to itself like a donut or a bagel of intergalactic dimensions. Just as you can roll a sheet of paper into a tube without changing its parallel properties, the universe can be donut-shaped while remaining flat. This is exactly what the researchers have found out with the aid of simulations of the cosmic microwave background. It turns out that compared to the standard cosmological model, which is considered infinite, we found a much better matching observation of the fluctuations. Such a universe must have an end, and the entirety of the vast expanse is possibly no more than four times larger than the boundaries of the universe that is observable by man, and its size is 47 billion light years in diameter. The universe can be self-contained in three dimensions and have the shape of a three-dimensional donut. Models of the finite universe may be intimidating to some people, but you will not perceive these boundaries. For all practical purposes, you simply live in an infinite universe, despite it having finite dimensions. But even if you don't necessarily end up finding yourself at the edge of this finite universe, would you be able to circumnavigate it and return to where you started? In theory, yes. After all, light can travel across the entire finite universe. I wonder how our donut-shaped universe looks from the side, presumably situated with others.
It is well known that our universe has dimensions, or a number of position coordinates by which it can be measured. Length, height, and width. In other words, these are measurements that put bounds on the universe that is known to us. Multidimensional space turns out to be more concentrated in terms of informational and energy capacities. At one point of space, a higher dimension may be the concentrated information of all the other layers of reality of the lower dimensions. Is it possible to discover that most inaccessible fourth dimension? And what does contact with it change in our world? If we ponder it for a while, we may possibly succeed in finding the answers. Simply stated, if you place a cube in front of you, then you won't see its backside, since vision is two-dimensional. If the cube begins to rotate, then the brain analyzing it will understand that it is a cube and that there is a backside. But what our brain knows is one thing, and how it is seen by the eyes is another. If our vision were three-dimensional, then we would see the cube simultaneously from all sides, like a scanner at an airport. We would see all of space in its entirety, and nothing could be hidden from us. That is to say, we must observe from without, as if we are watching a movie or even our own dream in which we can sometimes evaluate ourselves from the sidelines. Indeed, if we were to live in a two-dimensional space on a flat plane, we would have to stretch our imagination considerably in order to think of how to move a rectangle off of the flat plane on which we live. Well, conceptualizing a four-dimensional space is also quite difficult for us. A three-dimensional space is a space in which the position of a point is designated, as we have already said, by three numbers. For example, the position of an aircraft is indicated by longitude, latitude, and altitude above sea level. In a four-dimensional space, an object corresponds to a four-number coordinate. A four-dimensional cube is obtained by sliding an ordinary cube along in a particular direction that doesn't lie within our three-dimensional space. Where this direction is, or how to transcend our limits, is difficult to say, as well as to perceive. But use your imagination and indulge in fantasy, and why not? Often, this type of four-dimensional cube is called a tesseract, the equivalent of a usual three-dimensional cube, generalized in a four-dimensional space. Try to picture the properties of a hypothetical 4D space. To begin with, we need to understand if a fourth orthogonal axis is feasible in the coordinate system, and if so, where is it located? Indeed, for us, our familiar three-dimensional space is associated with three axes of the coordinate system. And if we can't even imagine something, that is, mentally create its corresponding image, does that then mean this something does not exist? It appears so. This poses the question, why exactly are there three spatial dimensions, no more and no less? It is apparent, because the atom, and along with it all the rest of matter, has precisely three spatial characteristics, length, width, and height. What characterizes these three attributes of space? Naturally, the spread of tangible objects in three possible directions, forward, back, left, right, up, down, the usual pattern for a kangaroo. Is it possible to see something from the fourth dimension? Most likely, yes, but it will only be a projection a part of what it really is. That is, for inhabitants in a one-dimensional existence, a line, any two-dimensional beings would be perceived merely as component parts of one dimension. Whatsoever transcends the bounds of this dimension won't be noticed, as the eyes are already out of the picture. In the same way, the inhabitants of a two-dimensional space, a flat plane, can see the inhabitants of a three-dimensional space only in the form of their two-dimensional imprints or projections. They also simply don't see anything in the third dimension. This means, if a person were to end up in this two-dimensional space, then in the best-case scenario, the local inhabitants of the flat plane would become acquainted with his footprints, and in the worst case, his cross-section. But if a fourth dimension does exist, then what would creatures or life look like on another world? In order to answer this question, we need to imagine how would the space of our world change if it became four-dimensional?
it's logical to assume that an additional side would appear, in which movement is possible, and a restructuring of configuration at an atomic level would begin. The electrons around the nuclei of atoms, having received an unrestricted new side, will begin to rotate in the fourth direction. The nucleus of the atom will also be restructured, and the chemical properties of the elements will change, which of course will fatally split all forms of 3D life. Meanwhile, after the restructuring of atoms in the fourth dimension, our planet Earth will be only one atom in thickness, but the Earth's mass will remain the same as it was in the three-dimensional space, due to which it will collapse in the fourth dimension under the weight of its own mass, and in the end, form a four-dimensional hypersphere. The same will happen to the Sun and the other planets and stars. Gravity will begin to spread out into the new direction, due to which there will be a chaotic change in the orbits of all of the celestial bodies in the entire universe. Ultimately, after a catastrophic restructuring, everything will stabilize, and there will be a new universe. True, nothing living on it up to that moment will remain. How many dimensions are there beyond our perception? For now, it remains a mystery. In the meantime, the world truly is multidimensional. Based upon a mathematical hypothesis, an infinite number of spatial dimensions can exist. Modern physics also adheres to this logic. Only, it is impossible to count the number of these types of dimensions. But owning to the understanding of at least a few of the additional dimensions, we would obtain a good tool for managing the world around us.